Yeah. Okay, good evening, everybody. Welcome back after the Benazman in break. I think, if I remember correctly, last we finished off in the middle of Perak Zion, the chapter 7. <clears throat> so, I'm very briefly, I think I'm going to go from the beginning of chapter 7 just to catch everybody up. Let's just put it into the context where we are now. Basically, as we said before, the Masil Shashoim already dealt with the Mida of Zihirut, which um, we variously translated it as watchfulness, a carefulness, the idea being that a person has to be watchful and careful not to transgress any of the negative mitzvahs of the Torah, and we spent several weeks going through those ideas. The next step up after that is, as it says in the Posig, Su Meira Va'ase Tov, turn aside from evil and do good. The, basis, the first step is a person has to stop what's doing what's wrong, and then he can um, move on to doing right actions. So, Zahirus, watchfulness, carefulness, not to transgress the Torah. After that comes Zrizus, which means alacrity, doing things, doing mitzvahs quickly. And we spent quite a long time <coughs> last week explaining on a deeper level why a person should do a mitzvah with, uh, uh, with alacrity. And we're going to go into that a bit, little bit tonight as well. <coughs> but let's start with chapter 7. Chelke has Zrizus Shnaim. There are two parts to Zrizus. Echakom hat chalasa One is before the beginning of the action. Va'echon achakain. And the second part of Zrizus, of alacrity, 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 is after you've started the mitzvah. So, kodem has chalasa who... So the beginning, the alacrity which is required before the mitzvah is shalo yach mitzvah adam es ha mitzvah that a person shouldn't, so to speak, let the mitzvah become chometz, shouldn't become stale. El zmano, but if the time for the mitzvah to be done, for example, kriyashma, a time-related mitzvah, which, re- re- uh, which repeats every day, uh, mitzvahs which repeat every day, some repeat every year, but whatever that is, there are certain mitzvahs which are time-bound and therefore the time arrives for them and you can't do that, you can't do them before that. Or a second category, the his damnus lafonov, uh, sorry, the his damno lafonov. Or if the mitzvah happens to literally occur, uh, take place uh, in, in front of him, comes along to him. For example, okay, it's an extreme example, let's say a person finds a dead body in the road, God forbid, and so he has now a mitzvah to, to bury that dead body. So that's not something which you could have known was going to happen. It's happening now. It, it occurred. It come across your path. So that's the second category of mitzvahs. Or ba'aloisa b'machshavta. Or a mitzvah that is neither time-bound nor is something which just falls a, upon your way. It's something that you suddenly thought about. Wow, I, I could do that. I can do whatever that mitzvah is. Maybe um, you think of just trying to think of an idea where that would it suddenly comes to your mind that you could do a mitzvah. All right, maybe if you can think of something, you'll let me know. But there are certain mitzvahs which suddenly you realize that you're in a position to do a mitzvah. Let's say uh, you're in a town and you suddenly realize your Rebbe's there. So you go, wow, I can go and visit my Rebbe. So and it's, um, it could be that's just on the Chagim, on the Yom Tov, say of the mitzvah of seeing Pnei Rabboi. Uh, seeing your, your Rebbe on the, the Moed. I'm sure there are many other ideas where things suddenly arise in your mind. So, those three possibilities for a mitzvah to come in to him. So, a person, In other words, as soon as one of these things happen, either the time comes or the opportunity happens or the idea happens, <clears throat> the idea, the first part is reasons is to do it immediately. Don't hang around. <clears throat> do not leave time between the possibility of doing the mitzvah and the act and the commencing of the mitzvah. Ki en sakana because there's no danger greater than that danger. Ashehine kol rega shemischadesh yuchal ischadesh eza ikuv la la se atov. Every second that passes by is just another opportunity for something to come along to stop you doing that mitzvah. So you should do it straight away. But Amitas Hadova, and on the truth of this idea, 
Heirun is the Rocha Chazal of Tortus and Bereshis Rabba, Be'inian Hamlochas Shloimoi, with the, the coronation of Shlomo, Shama David, Libinayahu, that David said to Binayahu, Vahoradetem Oisa El Gichon, take him down to the Gichon spring to be anointed. Vahana Binayahu, and he said, Omein, Kain, Yoma Hashem. That's Hashem said. So Chazal comment on that. Rabbi Pinchas B'Shem, Rabbi Chanon de Tzipuri, I, so why did David Amelech, um, how do you say, Chivi, Benayu, <coughs> to take Shlomo down to the place where he would be crowned, coronated, anointed with the water. Hello, Kavar Nehem, I had already said in Divrei Yomim, V'nei bein nolad loch, that a son will be born to you, to David, V'yeh ish menucha, he'll be a man of tranquility, meaning he's going to be the king. So that's already, we all, it's, we, that's so, so to speak, predestined. Ela harbe kategorim le'amod mikan va'ad gichon. Ela, the idea is there are many um, prosecutors that stand between here and gichon. A person always has, God forbid, the opportunity or the possibility, let's say, to lose a schus that he might have. Um, and so even though it may be pre- predestined or it may have been written that David and Melech would have such a son, nevertheless, you can't leave it as it is. You have to make sure to do your best to um, chivy it forward, to bring it forward as much as possible. Al-Ken Hisir Zichon Lerocha, that's why Chazal warn us, advise us, Mechiltus is in Shmois, Ushmatim is a matzah, is guard the matzahs, mitzvah habal yodcha al tachmitzena. And we dash him from that article, matzahs don't guard the matzahs, rather guard the mitzvah from becoming chomets. So we spoke at length last time, if you want to go into that on the morales, deeper understanding what's going on there. But again, it's the same idea of alacrity whenever a mitzvah is possible. Go do it straight away. So this is talking about um, the, the daughters of Lot and that the the Bechira, the elder one, went before the younger one, Lot's daughters, um, and the, the children they had from that union, we're not going to go into discussing about that now, um, basically, even though that was incest, but in their case it was the shame Mitzvah and the shame Shemayim, because they understood that they were existing in a world which is basically like a post-nuclear Holocaust, where there was nobody else to propagate the human race. So their intentions were L'shem Shemaim. But because the Bechira, the elder one, went before, she preempted her sister, so to speak. So she was Arba Doires. There were four generations. Um, and that was, came from her, from Moab. And they were Oived, Yishai, David, and Shlomo. And from that Seira, from the younger one, there was Rechavan, Shabame Isha, Amonis. So Rechavan was um, uh, an, an evil king. So we see that because that the, of the Zrizas of the older daughter, she was Zoycha to the four generations of whom, two of whom were Dovin and Shlomo. So these, of course, these are, just, these are exam- examples now of how a person should be as quick as possible to do the mitzvah. So, Zoch Salikit Kitma Arba Doiros be Israel Lamalchus. She had four generations of kings. For Omru, Zrizim, Magdim and Lamitzvahs, we know it says in Pesachim, Zrizim, one people who have alacrity will go forward quickly and do the mitzvah straight away. Vechein Omru, as it says, Laolim Yarutz Adam, Ladava Mitzvah, a person should always run to do a mitzvah, a fila Shabbos, and even on Shabbos where a person should conduct himself with menucha, with rest, tranquility, repose. Nevertheless, on Shabbos, you can run if it's a mitzvah. 
Um, Midrash Omrit says, Hu Yanagenu Al Mus. Um, how does he translate that, by the way? You have an English one there? He will guard, uh, he will guide us, Almus. Almus is a is a is a, a drosha, which is, talks about. Uh, where do I have it here somewhere? Almus. Almus. <laughs> okay, you're right. So I don't feel so bad then that he doesn't translate it either. Almus is tofofos. These are managois betof. These are like young girls who play on a tof, on a uh, tambourine. It's a kind of uh, musical instrument. And the point is, I think he brings it over here. Almus. Almus. Yeah. But it, 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 the idea is Brizrizus again, the idea with alacrity, ki ilain al ulemto. Like a young girl whose way is to jump and to run. That's the way a person, a person should be, his conduct should be in his Zrizus, his alacrity to, um, do, to go to do a mitzvah. Again, all of these pasukim are really illustrating the same point. He's just bringing sources from Chazal and from uh, Tanakh. Kilal ulemto, ulemo. So Kemoshed Dumama at Omer. It says betoch almus tofsos. That's what we said before that they betoch betoch and with these uh, these young girls who would play these tambourines. That's in Tehillim. He has Zerizus, he midas shleimus godl. Because Zerizus is a, it's an interesting, I want to examine this in some detail, because Zerizus is a mida, is a characteristic, a character trait of shleim, of great shleimus, a great perfection. Al asher tivoi shall odom, which the nature of a person, mona, pre, prevents him from doing this uh, now. And somebody who dominates, rises up and dominates, the tofes bo grabs hold on to this meter of zerizus, of alacrity. Kol as much as he's able to do, in the world to come, he will merit it in truth, in the world of truth. Asher yitna lo will give him b'scharo, Chelef ma shiyistadel. Hashem will reward this person in direct proportion to his effort, which he displayed in trying to achieve this mida. Bzman abatoso at the time when he was doing it. Now this is um, <coughs> this is an interesting idea. What is the idea here? Um, we spoke last time we met that this idea the reason why we need to do a mitzvah in a in the most in the quickest not, of course not rushing it but in, in a way which is the least time bound possible is that everything that Hashem does is beyond time the Torah the first word of the Torah Bereshis hints to the fact that Hashem was bara racious. He created beginning. Time is a creation as much as space is a creation. Time, uh, science understands now that it's a continuum. It's really the same thing. But just as this world is a creation, so time is a creation. Ex Hashem exists beyond time. And therefore, because the Hashem, the word mitzvah, by the way, I think we mentioned this before, there's a kind of gematria called atbash, Atbash really speaks out what it means. At, Aleph, Taf, Base, Shin. Aleph is the first letter of the al alphabet. Taf is the last, last letter of the alphabet. Base is the second left letter of the alphabet. And Shin is the second to last letter of the alphabet. So there's a certain gematria, a certain numerological way of expressing deeper understandings by the reversing of any particular letter with its 
corresponding letter, meaning Aleph becomes Tov, Tov becomes Aleph, Base becomes Shin, Shin becomes Base, etc., etc., etc. Now, if you take the word Mitzvah, Mem, Tzadi, Vav, and He. So, the Ad Bash of Mem, you can check if you want, is Yud, and the Ad Bash of Tzadi is He. So essentially, Hashem's name, Yud and He and Vav and He, is hinted to in the word mitzvah. And just like the Mem and the Tzadi don't reveal Hashem's name openly, but at the end, that's what we're hinting to. In Olam Haba, so the alacrity that a person used to do this mitzvah in a godly way, so to speak. Again, the idea is when you do a mitzvah in a time-bound fashion, in a laggardly fashion, what happens is you put the mitzvah under the aegis, under the command, so to speak, into the category of something called time. And time, as we said before, is something which is not a Kodesh Baruch Hudik. Why are we supposed to do the mitzvahs quickly? Because they are, they are godly things. And the, to the extent that we do them in a way which is as much as we can. Of course, we live in a world where time is, is, a, is, a, is a factor. But to the degree that we try to remove the element of time from them so they stay with their pristine connection to Hashem. So when a person does a mitzvah, mem tzadi vav hey, so the mem tzadi, the hidden part of Yudin hey of Hashem's name, which will become revealed in Olam Abba, becomes revealed to a, a greater degree, the greatest degree possible to the extent, as he says, that a person labored, given the restraints of this physical world, to rise above the world of time and to do that mitzvah in its purest, most pristine way. So that's the deeper understanding of what he's saying here. That this, that is why it's a, a mida, it's a zrizas is a midas, a shlemus god of great shlemus, perfection. Why? Because the ultimate shlemus perfection is a Kodesh Baruch Hu. So when a person does this reader, this rizas, in the quickest, this, the mitzvah, sorry, in the mitzvah in the most, the least time-bound way possible, this connects it back to the shlemus contained in that mitzvah, shlemus godl. And asher tivu shal odom, because the, and he's saying, adding something else now, that the nature of a person prevents him from doing this. The nature of a person is to man, odom in offer, man is a creation from dust. The nature of a person left to himself is to sink down like the dust, to be inert. The idea of alacrity is inimical to the physical part of a human being. It's true, and we'll speak about this later, that the soul is compared to a, a flame which seeks to ascend. The soul wants to go up. But the man is a, a synthesis, an uncomfortable synthesis in some ways of the spiritual and the physical. And the physical wants repose, the physical doesn't want to get out of the bed, the physical wants to bang the snooze button. And therefore the basic nature of a person is to be earthly, quite literally, to be inert. And it's only with great effort that he can rouse himself and get his body to rise up above this and do the mitzvah. And of course, as we said, most of the mitzvahs are physical, so, and we come to that as well. And anybody who grabs onto this idea of Zrizus, of alacrity, and as much as he's able, why as much as he's able? Because he'll never be able to be perfectly attuned to something which is beyond this world, which is beyond time, that only Hashem can do. But as much as he's able to do that, so therefore, in the world to come, that mem tzadi, that hidden part of Hashem's name, the mem and the tzadi, he will be zocha to the extent that he made that effort to be connected to that mitzvah, to be dovuk, to be stuck, to be in the greatest possible way. And that's all going to be based on his effort. Being that he's not able to achieve that total lack of time in his actions. But in the world to come, which has no time, 
So therefore, that effort will translate into a, a reality. Because Hashem is going to give him Bischaro as his reward, the equivalent of his effort which he put into his work. Now there's another concept here which I'm not sure I'm going to go into now, but maybe we'll mention it briefly. Chazal teaches scha mitzvah mitzvah. The mitzvah, the reward for a mitzvah is a mitzvah. So an understanding of this, a basic understanding is that if a person does a mitzvah, Hashem gives him the opportunity to do another mitzvah. On a deeper level, there's an understanding that the reward of the mitzvah is the mitzvah itself. Why is that a reward? We live in a world where we see the action of doing a mitzvah and the reward for that mitzvah as being two different things. For example, we see it as somebody works very hard and at the end of the week he gets his, his pay ticket, his pay, his paycheck. This is not what the reward of Olam Haba is. In a sense, there's nothing in the world to come which does not e exist in this world. And that's why it's called Olam Haba. If you think about it, the corollary of Olam Hazer, Olam Hazer means this world. So the corollary of this world should be Olam Ha, who? That world. This world, that world. But we see Chazal talk about Olam Hazer, about Olam Haba, and the world to come. Why is it the world to come? The Rambam says... Because this, the world to come, comes directly and is, in point of fact, identical to this world, revealed on a higher level. It's not chapter one and chapter two. Everything you're doing now will be, all of your actions will be revealed in Olam Haba. All of your mitzvahs, as we said before, will be, there will be a revelation. It's like <coughs> a replay of everything that you did in this world, but as it really is, the internality of it. Is there a chumash here? Yeah. This is an idea which really we see right at the beginning of the Torah. When Hashem creates the fruit trees. <clears throat> yeah. So on the third day, and it says, "V'yom Elokim, God said to Tadshe, Ha'aretz Desha, Esev, let the ground sprout forth with grasses, Mazri Azera, um, seed, making seed, Eitz Pri Ose Pri, Eitz Pri, which means a fruit tree, Ose Pri, making fruit. Now, when the earth actually fulfills that commandment of Hashem, it says, You hear the difference? Eitz pri ose pri, that's what Hashem commanded, becomes eitz ose pri. Chazal teaches that an eitz pri ose pri, what's an eitz pri? That's an eitz, where the taste of the tree was the same as the taste of the fruit. Nowadays, if you eat the tree, you will taste bark, you will taste wood. But the original commandment of HaKadosh Baruch Hu was it should be an eitz pri ose pri. And what do we have? We have a world of eitz ose pri. Now on a deeper level, that, what this means is in the world the Hashem, before the creation, and why it was that the land, the earth, did not fulfill Hashem's command as it was, that's a whole other subject, I can't go into that now. But the ideal Creation was supposed to be an eitz pri ose pri, a fruit tree, where the fruit tasted of the tree. Before the chet of Adam Arishan, which is connected to this, a person, nowadays, let's say, take it like this, you put on tefillin in the morning, right? Now you know putting on tefillin in on the morning is, is a good thing. And you feel good about the fact that you're doing something which is good. But you don't feel suffused with this supernal, glowing, overpowering spiritual feeling of, you know, of like, 
this huge jolt of spirituality. I mean, maybe you do. I don't know. I, I don't. But um, We live in the world of eight Sesopri, where our, our mitzvahs are dry like wood. We do them as actions, but we have no time. We have no taste of what they really are. Really, before the Chet of Odom Arishan, a mitzvah, you could, you could live the Olam Abba, so to speak, in the Olam Azeh. The schar, the action and the reward were identical. As we said before, we tend to think of, you do the action, you get the reward. But no, it's really, that's only because we in, live in a world of concealment, where we don't see that reward, we, we don't sense it. We know we're doing something right, fine, but really, ideally, and that's what it means, Olam Abba, in the world to come, we will experience all of those dry physical actions, like putting on tefillin but we will experience them in the way they really are. That's what it means, scha mitzvah, mitzvah. The reward for a mitzvah is the experiencing the internality of the mitzvah, the mitzvah as it really is, the taste of that mitzvah, the eitz pri oser pri. We'll experience the fact that the action was really the reward in itself. The sweetness of, 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 of the reward is the doing of the action. That's what he means. What's, that's what we're talking about. Hinei la osin lavo yiske be'emes. A person will be zoicha to this zrizus, even though in this world he's doing something which he knows to be a good thing. He's overcoming his natural, physical, um, heaviness. But the actual experiencing of the sweetness of that zrizus, of that alacrity, will only be. When the mitzvah is revealed in Olam Abba, when the mem and the tzadi finally become the yud and the hay. And the yud and the hay and the vav and the hay, of course, is a Kodesh Baruch Hu's name. Okay. So, really, all I've done so far is really to get us to where we got to at the end of the last month. But, that's okay. So, what have we said? There are two parts to Zerizus, two parts to alacrity. One is the alacrity to commence the mitzvah, either because the time comes for it, the opportunity presents itself to you, or you, you think about doing it. Now, the second part of the mitzvah, which is, in a way, more important, in a sense, and we'll see why, is after the mitzvah's been started, make, do as much as you can to finish it as soon as possible. Ach hazrizus, ach ha, let's look inside. Ach hazrizus, ach ha amasehu. But the alacrity which is required after the beginning of the action of the mitzvah. Shekivan she'ochas a mitzvah yemahe lahashli moisa. Seeing as you've <coughs> started to do the mitzvah, you should you should endeavor to complete it as quickly as possible. Lo lo hokel me'olav, and not to be like uh, lenient, or I don't know, it's a better word, not to be uh, light and and treat it lightly. Kamishim is aver lahashlich maso. No, sorry, but not in the sense that you should fi- finish it quickly, quick, as quickly as possible, to be like um, to get it out of the way. The hokel meolov to like make it very easy on yourself, like somebody who's trying to just you know get it done and push it off as soon as possible. Ella, why should you do it as quickly as possible with the greatest dispatches? Me or also because a person should. Be in fear, penlo yisker ligmo oisom, because maybe you won't get the chance to finish this. Let's say you 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 start to um, gather money for tzedakah, for a, you want to build a buy a, make write a sefer Torah, and you start writing the sefer Torah. So of course you're not allowed to rush, but you you shouldn't leave it as it is because you want to finish the mitzvah. It's a very important thing to finish a mitzvah once you've started it. Chazal go to great lengths to warn us about this. Anybody who begins a mitzvah and he doesn't complete it, he buries his wife and his children. It's very, 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 very stark, very strong, very frightening. This has to be understood. What's the connection between not finishing a mitzvah and, God forbid, burying your wife and your children? 
So, this is based on the Maharal in the Siva Shalom, the Siva Torah Perek Yud Ches. That this is a question of Mida Keneged Mida. Mida Keneged Mida means measure for measure. Why? Shaha'isha ha shlemus ha'odam. A wife is the shlemus of a man, of a person. A man who doesn't get married lives without bracha, lives without tov. So a person who doesn't have a wife or loses his wife, God forbid, he is lacking in completion. Vahabonim heim hakiyum shala odam. Babriya Loolam. And the children of a person are his hemshech, or his continuation throughout the generations. Somebody who starts a mitzvah and he doesn't complete it, the mitzvah is not therefore, how do you say, existing in the world. It doesn't have a kiyum. And therefore, Bamida Kamegid Mida. It's taken from him his continued existence in the world, which are his children. So that's the idea here. It's a kind of a person, when a person starts a mitzvah, he brings it into existence, but he doesn't finish it. So it's lacking the fact that he was not mashlim, this, this creation in the world of the mitzvah, means that. His shleimus is taken away from him, which is his wife, and his hemshech, his continuation in the world, which is his children, are taken away because he didn't give the mitzvah the ability to exist, to continue. But Aaron, it says, Eina mitzvah nikres ela al shame gomro. A mitzvah is attributed to the person who finishes it, not the person. Who stopped? Who start? Who started it? How do we see this? Because it says in Yeshua, "Ve'es mitzvahs Yosef Asher halu b'nei Yisrael." The bones of jo- Joseph, which um, the children of Israel brought up from from Egypt, but uh, it was Moshe who brought up the bones of Yosef, right? But a Moshe halu, rather because. Moshe was decreed upon Moshe that he wouldn't enter Eretz Israel, and therefore that mitzvah was taken away from him. It wasn't called on his name. I mean, of course, he doesn't. He's not blamed for not being able to complete the music, the mitzvah, because it wasn't it, it, through lack of his own. It, it, Hashem wouldn't, so to speak, let him finish the mitzvah. But. Nevertheless, it says in Yeshua, the bones of Joseph, not that Moses brought up, even though he instigated it, he started it. No, it's that the Klal Israel brought up from Egypt. Okay. Where we go a little bit further. Vahamah Shlomo HaMelech, Allah V'Shalom. Shlomo HaMelech says, Chazisa Ish so the same idea here. Have you seen a person who is quick in his work, of course, the work of mitzvahs? <coughs> he will stand in front of kings, and he won't be standing in front of lowly ones. Same idea. Chazal also say in Hadzan Edrin, Yichasulo Hasheva Chazer Al Shimihem Al Beleches Binyan Bayis Belonis Atzel Bo Laacha Oiso Yichasulo Hasheva Chazer The Shevach, the praise. How did you translate that there? Yechasula Hashem Chazer. It's um, I write this in the other book. 
Yeah, the Chomim Sukkur of the Mesod said, "This is talking about Shlomo Amalech." Yeah, Shlomo Amalech, right? Ashemi here because he was alacritous in the building of the of the base of Mikdash, Malachis base of Mishvelo Nisatzel Bala Acha Oiso, and he wasn't slaggedly about, it, wasn't lazy about doing it. So Shlomo Amalech was the Chacham Mikol Adam. He was the wisest, wisest of all people. And it's impossible to measure the, how do you say, the, his level, how exalted his level as a person was. That's not something which we as people, mortal people, can even conjecture of the level he was standing on. But nevertheless, he is singled out, his praise is singled out in as much as that he did things with Zerizus. You hear what he's saying here? It's a beautiful idea. This is, I think, from Revolbi. That Shlomo Malach had all the milers in the world. All the praiseworthy attributes in the world. All of them. He was the wisest of all men. And what does he singled out to be? What was the meter that he had that was singled out? That he was alacritous in the building of the base of Mikdash. So we see from that how important if that's what Shlomo Melech at the end of the day was praised for, we see how dear and how important the Midah of Zerizus is. <coughs> Let's just go to the end of this paragraph. Yeah, that's the Sanhedrin. V'chein timtza kal ma'asem shel tzadikim tomid v'mehirus. You'll see all the actions of the tzadikim are always done in this way. Avram Ksibit says by Avram Avinu, Vyamahe Avraham, Hoela El Sara, Vyoma Mahari. Avram Avinu, if you remember when he had guests, he didn't realize they were Malachim. He rushed, he hurried into the test, the tent to tell Sarah to prepare for them food. And it says, Vyitel Alana, Vyamahe, talking about the Chinuch of to be Machanech Yitzok in, in mitzvahs. Rivka, Imenu, it says by her, Remember when she lent, lent Rivka brought the, the, cam, the camels to the, um, her, her kad, her, what's it called, her jag to water the, the camels of um, Eliezer. So we see that she did it, Vitae, she emptied it, she did it with Zrizus. Vechenomer and the Medrash and Bamidva, with the Isha. And this is the mother of Shimshon. Malamisha Kalma Sem Shal Tzadikim. This is an, uh, where she rushed back to her husband after, I think it was Eli Anovi came to her to announce the fact she was going to give birth to Shimshon. And actually, she actually, uh, uh, her husband's name was Manoach, but her name was actually never mentioned in. We, never, we don't know what the name of Shimshon's mother was. Being as it may, we see that she was pra praised for the quickness of which she went back and reported what the Malach had said to her about her bearing a shimshon. All the actions of the tzaddikim are with alacrity. They do not allow a pause or an interruption of time. Neither when talk, uh, talking about the beginning of the mitzvahs and nor when referring to their completion. Okay, I think we'll leave it here and Bezrat Hashem will pick up next week.